As you will hear, these hearings demonstrated not just the injustice which was perpetrated against leading U.S. political officials by the Department of Justice because of their political views, exemplified by the case of Lyndon LaRouche, but the inherent danger at that time that such abuses, if left unchecked, could subsequently threaten the very existence of our constitutional republic itself, a fight we see playing out today as we speak at the very highest level of our government in the form of the attempted takedown of the U.S. presidency. The raid command post about three miles from town was busy all night. Just before dawn, Virginia State Police moved out. It was a combined strike force, including FBI, Internal Revenue Service, Secret Service, and other federal and state agents. As FBI agents approached LaRouche's estate in Leesburg, Virginia, 50 miles from Washington, police lined up outside. Good evening. Federal and state agents today raided the Leesburg, Virginia headquarters of political activist Lyndon LaRouche. And today it was a law enforcement assault here in Leesburg that set this town buzzing. Scores of state and local police joined federal agents in a coordinated nationwide raid. On October 6, 1986, 400 FBI, state police, IRS, ATF agents, and the national news media descended on Leesburg, Virginia to search offices associated with the LaRouche political movement. At a farm outside Leesburg, where Lyndon and Helga Sup LaRouche were staying, heavily armed agents dressed in full tactical gear patrolled the perimeter as armored personnel carriers surrounded the property and helicopters buzzed constantly overhead. In addition to the materials specified in the federal search warrant, according to later court testimony, the FBI case agent in charge was searching for evidence by which to obtain an arrest warrant for Lyndon LaRouche himself and a search warrant to allow armed entry to the farm. A plan was in place to provoke a firefight with LaRouche's security guards to take out LaRouche, which was admitted years later. During the evening of October 6th, moves to implement that plan seemed to begin with news stations broadcasting that now an assault was about to occur on the farm. A telegram was sent in LaRouche's name to President Ronald Reagan, seeking his intervention to call off the raid. Coincidentally, at exactly the same time, President Reagan was in Reykjavik, Iceland, refusing to back down in negotiations with Mikhail Gorbachev on his commitment to the so-called SDI, the Strategic Defense Initiative the same SDI that Lyndon LaRouche had worked for years alongside top officials in the Reagan administration to craft and support. A first generation of strategic ballistic missile defense. Only after this telegram to Ronald Reagan was sent did the forces surrounding the farm begin to dissipate and recede. 